Hi everybody, I'm here with Wooly. He is known for our super best friends and actually his own channel, Wooly Versus. Thank you for joining in on my show, it's Story Mode. And I'm just here, part of EVO, just have a good time and actually talk to an actual EVO player. Oh. So, before we get down to the gritty, let's go to how did you get into the fighting game scene? Like what game got you into fighting games in general? I mean, it's the boring answer is Street Fighter 2 where everyone else got in. But as for the how, um, basically the way uh, I grew up was with a lot of cousins and a lot of siblings growing up in the same house. And, you know, a thing that I've often said is I have a theory that the reason why black people are into fighting games so much is because there's a whole lot of kids in a house where you got to have everyone have a turn and everyone's got to have fun together and your parents are like there's no way in hell I'm letting you rent a single player game or any sort of RPG bullshit you're renting something that you and your friends and your cousin and your brother can all play and have fun with for a long time and you're taking fucking turns and you're doing it every 60 seconds so what is that that's a fighting game so we played Street Fighter a lot in our house and we passed the controller around and it was like the most fun you would have not playing a game would be waiting for your controller to pass back around to you. And yeah, after doing tons of that every weekend, um, it just became a genre thing that I was like, oh, there are more of these, and I love them, and they are near and dear to me. So, Street Fighter 2. That's cool. But I could also relate, because I'm not Dino, same rules apply. You gotta get it for your cousins, your families, your amigos, your amigas. You can't, you can't escape from that, it's true. I, yeah, I, you know, a lot, I was envious in some degre degree of friends that were able to play like Final Fantasy and they were able to play a lot of old RPGs and I got Dragon Warriors, the, one of the first games as a kid, and you know, and Zelda and stuff, but we just never really had a, a huge chance when we got uh, more games and we got through controllers and we started renting stuff, and we never had a huge chance to play a lot of single player stuff, so by circumstance, I guess, is, is what made me like fighting games. And on top of that, because fighting games is such a social thing, how did you get into the fighting game crowd? Like, I know you used to host tournaments and all that at a small place in Canada, but how did you meet up and how did you know there were other players just like you who wanted to just play? So, you know, I often, uh, we talk about uh, how Matt and I used to meet uh, and Pat as well. Back in our college days, we would play fighting games in empty classrooms. And we met a large group of random people from college that were all just like, I want to play Third, third, third Strike, I want to play Soul Calibur. So they'd come hang out in those classrooms. Eventually, when Street Fighter 4 became a big deal, I mean, it was when, when it was announced, I was like, okay, there's a lot of people, we want to meet up and do some, do some things. So I decided to start taking my console over to a, a little bar downtown, and I would set up the TV screen and... and you know, bring up two arcade sticks and people would come in and we'd do a two dollar tournament and just random people would walk in and be like, oh cool. Um, we advertised it on Facebook and eventually word got around and then uh, tournament players from way back in the day started coming to our Street Fighter meetups. I called them Tatsumaki Tuesdays. And uh, you know, from there just word spread that like a new fighting game meetup group was happening every Tuesday at this bar. And from there, I just got to meet all the OGs. I got to meet everybody who used to travel and people that, you know, made a name for themselves back in the day where we came from. And uh, with each successive month, the numbers just exploded until eventually we were like, we need to get a bigger venue. We need to get a bigger, you know, a more organized setup. And I started holding majors. I started holding large events in like rented out um, ballrooms and stuff. And just through that, American players hear about it, they see there's a large pot, they come to travel, we invited people out, we flew a few, a few people out as well, you know, one thing after another, I suppose. Oh, that's really cool. And what was the first year you competed at EVO? 2010. And I read this somewhere, you did fought Daigo. That was not my first year. That wasn't your first year? No. But I read that story that you actually fought the legend. Yeah. So my first year was 2010. And I fought uh, Sanford Kelly uh, second in my pool. So that was like, all right, what the fuck? Because Sanford Kelly's a kind of an OG legend as well. He's a beast. Yeah. Um, 2012 was when I fought Daigo round one. And, you know, that story's out there for everyone. 
who knows about uh, my my infamous shoryu sandwich. Yeah. But I really do like to ask you this question: How did it feel knowing that you're going up against him, Daigo? Like a lot of people I talk to say they got nervous, like they got scared because you know because what he could do and all that. And of course, he did that video, that montage that we like so much. But this, this, I want to be just legit. Like, tell me your real thoughts about that situation. I wasn't nervous at all. I going into it, having practiced with everybody that I did. Um, one of the things that was really important to me in these situations was to not get nervous when I'm sitting down next to a top player, because that's how you lose right away. You, if you lose on the character select screen in your brain, you've already lost the match. So. To me, it was like, this is a really good Ryu, and you know where he comes from, and you know what his deal is, but don't let that get you shook. Um, so what helps with that is the fact that the night before, in our hotel room, we were doing some casuals and practicing, and we invited some players into our room, uh, and so uh, we had a lot of American players come by, and international players came by. Um, some of them included, like, Infiltration, oh, wow. who came up, and this was before he was a, a big name, right? So. He came up to the room and we did some sets and they said, hey, like, this guy's got to fight Daigo first round tomorrow. You want to show him the Ryu matchup with Blanca and, like, just do some practice? He was like, yeah, sure. He's a really chill guy. So we played and he bodied my ass so hard. I have never lost that hard in any fighting game ever. I, I, it was a new level. And it wasn't like double perfect, triple perfect. It wasn't like that. It was just his ability to shut down every single offensive thing I was doing. So every time I did a blanket ball, it wasn't about blocking and punishing or um, making a right read. He would just react and jab me out of the air every single time. He just shut down every button I had. And so after fighting him and seeing how incredibly strong of a wall a really good Ryu could be, it put me through the grinder. And when I went uh, the next day and fought Daigo, Daigo was nowhere near as good as Infiltration's Ryu was the night before. So that made it even less scary. And all that to say that he's still, I'm not gonna disrespect the, like, the god that fucking bopped my ass live on stream, but I wasn't shaking or nervous or worried about how that was gonna go. I just was in my head thinking, this is how the matchup is. I know what I need to do here. I know what I need to do there. And uh, that's all I was really thinking, you know, when I went down. And then when I got up, I was like, oh, let's make this fun. Let me put the shades on and we'll get a good moment out of it, you know? But for the most part, um, yeah, thanks to the players I played with the night before, uh, it really helped me, you know, just kind of treat it like a normal match against a really good player. And uh, of course, Infiltration went on to win in Evo that year. And in the night, for, in the room before, uh, after switching to after switching to Ryu, he then showed us his Hakan, and we were like, "That's insane! There's no such thing as a good Hakan." And he destroyed everyone in the room with him. And then he proceeded to do it live on stage that year at Evo as well. So it was a really cool thing to kind of see the preview of Infiltration before he became the giant beast that he is today on top of the game, you know? That's really interesting. That is really cool. And how do you feel about the community the way it is now? Like, you know, it's growing, it's expanding. Evo is actually on mainstream now on ESPN too. Yeah. And that's really amazing because it's like we finally got the recognition we kind of deserve. Like, we really do deserve this. And yeah. I'm glad they're acknowledging that the fighting game genre is strong. And But how do you feel about the way the community is now? Uh, it's healthier than it's ever been in terms of numbers. I think the fact that it's getting on ESPN and it's getting exposed around and people are actually like catching wind of this evil thing is really cool. Last year when I went to the grand finals at the at the, um, the event center. It was I had a, a surreal moment of walking into a UFC or like hockey sized arena for a fighting games and kind of just processing how far we've come. And it really like it hit me pretty hard, you know, because I'd never seen anything like that in my years of doing FGC stuff. Um, so I'm really glad that it's back, it's healthy, in terms of just, yeah, the, the numbers are here, and people care about fighting games, we've got more really good fighters than we've ever had in all of history, um, you know, so like, I think just as a whole, the fighting game community is, is flourishing and flying. There's a couple of issues going on with Capcom right now, particularly, uh, that's upsetting some fans, and 
I hope that they kind of sort them out with, with Street Fighter V and with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. But no specific games aside, to just talk about the fighting game community as a whole, like, it's the best it's ever been, and it's not showing any signs of really stopping. That's really great. Um, I do have to ask a fan question. Um, which is your favorite type of fighting game, and why? Third Strike's my favorite fighting game of all time, and the reason why is because Makoto is in it. <laughs> okay, that's a good answer. I'm not going to go into more detail of that. That's all you need. Thank you again, Wolves, for showing up on my channel. No problem. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate this. Especially, I'm a fan of his work. Thank you. For real, especially when you went solo. Like, you're still with him, but as soon as you did Wooly Process, dude, I love it. Thank especially you. the segment, Go to the Head. Right on, man. <laughs> so, thank you again. I hope you have a great weekend. And have a nice day. Take and care. You too. You want to plug in your channel? Not really. No, I'll just put it in the description. That'll do. <laughs> Thanks again. Peace out. Take care.